I'm so excited to present here today my research on a new form of physics that pertains to computing and cyberspace. This presentation is organized as follows. I'll begin by defining the, this new form of physics, which I call cyberphysics, and I will relate it to data science. I'll then recall some historical approaches that were used a long time ago to discover some of the conventional physics that we know today. I'll then explain how these approaches could be ported to cyberspace to discover cyberphysics. I will provide some insight into the research methods that I'm exploring to discover cyberphysics, and then I'll describe some applications that emphasize the power of cyberphysics to advance both defense and attack. At the end, I will open the floor for questions. Cyberphysics consists of mathematical rules that control, regulate, or otherwise govern the large scale behavior of components of computing, such as the computer processor, the IO device controllers, the memory controller, the operating system kernel, user processes, enhanced applications, algorithms, and networking. Cyberphysics advances data science by contributing physics like laws that give rise to relations between data. Cyberphysics supports cyber operations with high quality situational awareness data, which in turn could be viewed via visualization tools such as heat maps and selective revelation of information. The most important related work is the seminal research of Stephanie Forrest on the biology of computing with applications to cybersecurity and privacy. Perhaps biology could be viewed as the physics of living organisms and physics as the biology of matter. This is an illustration of a 21st century pipeline computer processor. As unusual as it may sound, a computer processor does have some similarity to a 19th century idealized heat engine. Both systems take heat, a part of which is used to do work, and the rest is dissipated in the atmosphere. Here, the system of interest is a stage of the processor pipeline. The logical heat, namely data, originates in the flip flops and is given to the gates, which compute and has do work. Some gates do useful work in the sense that they produce bits that uh, contribute to a machine instruction that is currently running in the processor. Other gates do work that is uh, later wasted in the sense that these gates produce bits that are discarded at the multiplexer. The gates that do useful work have the opportunity to affect the computations of gates that reside in successive stages of the processor pipeline. Thus the gates that do useful work in one stage could be in a causal relation with gates in another stage. This causal relation takes the form of a Boolean equation, which extends from one stage to another when these two stages are placed in contact with each other via a layer of flip-flops. This Boolean equation is in a way behaving similarly to the concept of temperature in conventional physics. Thus metaphorically, we could say that these gates have the same temperature, which very much resembles the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Two separate systems are placed in contact with each other. Heat travels from the hot system into the cold system. There will be some interactions there, but at some point, the two systems reach equilibrium and have the same temperature. Furthermore, there is a sense of entropy in the process of pipeline, since the Boolean equation of useful work extends only one direction from one stage to another, and hence never the way around. Let us now refer to a container of gas, which consists of a large number of molecules. These molecules continuously move in random directions and frequently hit each other. The individual action of a molecule can be modeled mathematically. The overall behavior of an individual molecule can be explained by the molecule's subatomic design. This is an important detail that we'll recall later on uh, in this presentation in relation to cyberphysics. Now, all these molecules, millions of them, collectively exhibit large-scale behavior, which has its own parameters. Thus, there are mathematical quantities that characterize the gas in the container. This is a graphical illustration of the molecules of a gas in a container. Examples of microscopic physical quantities that characterize the action of a molecule include mass, velocity, and kinetic energy. Examples of macroscopic physical quantities that characterize the behavior of the gas as a whole include temperature, entropy, pressure, energy, and work. There are two approaches to discovering the laws of physics that govern the behavior of this system. 
namely thermodynamics and kinetic theory. Thermodynamics is based on empirical observations and experiments to discover laws of physics that relate macroscopic physical quantities with each other. Kinetic theory leverages the mathematical models of the individual molecules, which it then uses to step-by-step -step derive these laws of thermodynamics. Thus, thermodynamics and kinetic theory are complementary to each other. The laws of thermodynamics can be explained and validated by kinetic theory. On the other hand, kinetic theory often provides unique insights into the large-scale behavior of the system, which lead to the discovery of laws of thermodynamics. In my research, I explore methods of thermodynamics and kinetic theory, more specifically statistical mechanics, to discover mathematical quantities and physics-like laws of cyberspace in aggregate from a probabilistic examination of the underlying elements of computing. I'm exploring, extending, and applying statistical mechanics to the study of cyberspace to discover its cyber physics. Obviously, cyberspace is fundamentally different than the physical world. Nevertheless, some of the concepts of conventional physics, including physical quantities and laws, could have counterparts in cyber physics. Furthermore, cyber physics could have mathematical quantities and physics-like laws that may not be encountered in conventional physics. This is an illustration of a testbed that aims at collecting data in support of a discovery of cyber physics, uh, now via data-driven mathematical models. Statistical mechanics can work with subjective probabilities. Nevertheless, empirical data measurements are helpful in assessing the consequences of subjective assignments of probability in applied statistical mechanics and also help validate cyber physics discovered via theoretical mathematical models. I collect data primarily through instrumentation of hardware and the operating system kernel. I also extend a hypervisor to exploit system virtualization for the purpose of data collection. In addition to statistical mechanics and statistical physics in general, I develop new statistical science that has stronger affinity with cyberspace. A key intervention in statistical mechanics is the decomposition of a system into particles. While these particles have a character of their own in terms of behavior, they collectively give rise to large scale system behavior as I described earlier in this presentation. For the purpose of discovering cyber physics, the physical quantities of particles do not need to be measurable. The physical quantities that characterize the large scale behavior, however, need to be measurable to be useful to this research. The counterpart of thermodynamics in cyber physics is developed via our knowledge of the inner workings of a computing machine, uh, data-driven mathematical models, empirical observations, and practical experiments on the testbed. The cyber counterpart of kinetic theory studies the individual particles, such as gates in a computer processor or instructions in the operating system's kernel and applications. And uh, here I define mathematical quantities that characterize the action of gates and instructions and then I use methods of statistical mechanics that use probability to derive physics-like laws. Statistical mechanics uses a conventional probability theory that we all know. You encounter the usual tools of probability, such as cumulative probability functions, probability density functions, or probability mass functions, expectation values and moments of the probability density functions, uh, characteristic functions, cumulant generating functions, uh, sums of random variables and the central limit theorem uh, and plenty of other concepts that, that we all learn in conventional uh, probability theory. Thus, there are no barriers to apply statistical mechanics to cyberspace. This is an illustration of how I research the physics-like laws of a computer processor via thermodynamics and kinetic theory. Here, the particles are the gates, which I model mathematically. These models are statistically refined and integrated to obtain a probabilistic description of the operation of a computer processor. The physics-like laws of a computer processor can be used to probe for hardware implants. The basis for this is that hardware implants cause changes to gates and how those gates work with each other, which in turn results in violations of the laws of cyber thermodynamics of a clean variant of the computer processor. The definition of small scale mathematical quantities of a gate is one of the most important steps in this research. 
we should be able to discover small-scale mathematical quantities that are disturbed by the activity of a hardware implant. While disturbances to individual gates are not measurable, the large-scale behavior of the altered processor design fails to comply with the cyber thermodynamics of the clean processor. Another critical factor is the definition of the large-scale mathematical quantities of a computer processor. We can inherit some physical quantities from conventional physics, including temperature, energy, and work. We can also seek new mathematical quantities that are added to how we characterize the operation of a computer processor and the other components of a computing machine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Regarding the computer processor, empirical observables that we can measure and integrate with mathematical models include performance counter data, the output of instructions stored in memory and the register file, and also parameters of conventional physics, such as power consumption and electromagnetic emanation. A particular interest is how the cyber physics of a computer processor interacts with the conventional physics of a computer processor. In cyber physics, as in conventional physics, the interactions between particles is of paramount importance to discovering how small scale action could result in emergent patterns of large scale behavior. Obviously in a computer processor, gates interact by giving each other bits that are the result of their computation. With the occurrence of any type of hazards uh, in a computer processor, we see a collection of gates in one stage of the pipeline affecting a collection of gates in another stage of the pipeline. In general, I look for any factors that give rise to interaction between gates or groups of gates. This illustration shows a very simple hardware circuit that executes single bit AND and OR operations. We are simply arithmetizing the work performed by a gate by assigning it a numerical value. The gates that do useful work are then treated as a Boolean equation, which gives us a sequence of integers. We encode these sequences of integers via the Gödel method. Gödel encoding gives us a real number, which could be interpreted as a quantification of the work that uh, was performed by the machine instruction. When we interpret the bits that are given to a gate as heat or a form of energy that enables a gate to do work, we obtain this data plot that illustrates how energy is converted to work over the duration of a clock cycle. Here we can see a manifestation of the first law of the conventional thermodynamics. This is an illustration of how the physics-like laws of the various components of computing enter into a hierarchical causality relation with each other. This is the point of attention that I referenced earlier in this presentation. Uh, similarly to how the behavior of a molecule can be explained by its subatomic structure, the physics-like laws of large networks of machines can be explained by the physics-like laws of individual machines. The cyber physics of a machine can be explained by the cyber physics of its operating system kernel and application. The cyber physics of the operating system kernel and applications in turn can be explained by the cyber physics of hardware, such as a computer processor. With physics-like laws, we can finally make sense of large volumes of random looking network packets or IO traffic uh, that are displayed on a screen for analysis, which are otherwise hard to decipher. Here, once again, we emphasize the importance of studying the interaction of cyber physics with the conventional physics of cyberspace. I'll now discuss some applications of cyber physics. Given that we can apply statistical physics that discover physics-like laws of a computing machine, we could certainly do the same for a neural network and beyond, meaning the human cognition. Physics-like laws of the cognition of a threat actor uh, enable defenders to customize deception tools and algorithms against that threat actor. This could increase the likelihood of detecting exploits and malware developed by that specific threat actor. Knowledge of the cyber physics of an operating system kernel enables us to adapt operating system algorithms in favor of defense. For example, the physics-like laws of the memory system provide a stronger characterization of normalcy, which we could leverage to detect deviations caused by exploits and malware. The main objective of cyber deception engineering is to create decoys that resemble closely their real counterparts. Knowledge of the cyber physics of those real counterparts, such as a network interface card or a solid state drive, 
enables us to design cyber physics compliant decoys that withstand validation probes that are sent by exploits and malware. In conclusion, our physics mathematical models require a high performance computing environment to produce findings in reasonable time. The mathematical concepts are simple. We work with summations of exponential quantities, cell point integration, sums of random variables, and the central limit theorem. Nevertheless, these models work with very large numbers and very large volumes of data. Consider, for example, that there are hundreds of millions of gates in a typical computer processor. Our models average over all those gates and their possible microstates, which creates a humongous amount of data to crack. At this point, I thank you very much for your attention. And of course, all questions are welcome.